Kianoske Yamashita, Kianoske Yamashita, Kianoske Yamashita, Kianoske Yamashita, Kionoske Yamashita. The 34th matchup of Battle at the Barracks Season 12 found former champ and runner-up Chris Joslin pitted against newcomer Aurelian Giroux. Manny Santiago killed it on hosting duty, and Gustavo Ribeiro, rocking Red Bull's 2022 spring line of head wound wraps, shared refing duty with the handrail blunt flipper, I'm sorry if I uh, butcher this in advance, but Jinwoo and Nadara. But this is funny because they both sat in the same spot during the battle instead of each taking one side to maximize field of vision for toe touch violations, for example. Addressing one of the hardest hitting controversial topics that's been keeping Battle at the Barracks viewers awake at night, Chris Choslin single-handedly solved the baffling problem posed by Manny about what a skater on defense must do if their opponent lands a three shove that looks like an impossible. What if you do a three shove that looks like an impossible? Then you gotta do a three show that looks like an impossible. Okay, I like that, I like that, I like that. Aurelian deliberately disobeys Manny's instructions to throw paper during the Rochambeau. Okay, 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 wait, 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 <laughs> resulting in Joslyn starting the battle. An audience member's sarcastic whistle of admiration to Chris's opening frontside half cab attempts to ease the tension of such a heavyweight matchup. Apart from which, the only other audible sounds are squeaky bushings. The battle started off very tame between the Etnies and Plan B teammates, with the initial most noteworthy moments being Joslyn's out-of-character sketchiness with the fakey flip and switch kick flip. Aurelian found a way to swing his flick foot around a potential miss on the Nolly heel flip, receiving a corresponding woe from the crowd. The first letter was dealt to Aurelian on turn 32. Via the backside heel flip, he landed bolts, but was leaning too far back. More fundamentals ensued for a few turns before Joslin showed signs of his rookie days in Battle at the Barracks 8, which was the only other time he missed a Nolly frontside heel flip out of 8 total attempts. Giroux wasted no time on offense to get right to the hard flips, handled well on defense by Joslin. Aurelian quickly decided to get hectic with a backside 360 kickflip attempt, and the trick's 30% success rate at Battle at the Barracks would favor the unlikely odds of a make, quickly giving Chris back control for the second time. Joslin doubled back and got himself the nolly frontside heel, while Giro did the same but followed up with what looked like a euphoric self-check of his personal inventory. I've heard switch front bigs are a relatively easy trick in general, and they're 80% consistent out of 345 attempts in battle at the barracks, but Aurelian's miss hinted that this battle could quickly turn into Chris's 12th career victory, especially after the fakey varial heel miss one turn later. Aurelian regained his focus and held himself together on defense until Joslin missed his first ever nolly hard flip of the five he's attempted. Setting the offensive trick, Jero gracefully stomps a half cab hard flip, and history would suggest Joslin can handle this trick, given his three prior successful attempts. But something wasn't clicking on this day for Chris, and letter S was quickly delivered. Aurelian capitalized on Joslin's flub by doing the previous trick in regular stance, and Chris's bail called back memories of his three flip down El Toro. Bruh. Chris is 60% consistent with backside hard flips, and this battle would be his fourth miss at the trick, causing letter K. Showing zero signs of chill, Aurelian 540 flipped on offense, causing letter A on Chris's third consecutive defensive turn, who landed only one 540 flip in the past. Impressively holding on to any hope of getting an offensive redo, Aurelian's trade double flip is perfect on the second try, which is bad news for Joslin and his 0 for 3 record on this trick. A hard flip late flip is 100% Aurelian's signature death blow, a trick that's never even been thought of in Battle at the Barracks before Giroux showed up. 
Joslin made two valiant attempts, but it's clear that Seva Krutskov will not only need to practice this trick, but also brush up on the hard flip frontside revert and maybe something we've never seen before because Aurelian is not to be taken lightly. I tried to dig up any interesting takeaways from this battle, like the fact that not one regular kickflip was attempted, but that's been the case in nearly a quarter of the matches this season alone and the same percentage overall of the 391 total battles throughout the years. What's probably the most impressive stat about this battle is the speed at which Joslyn went from letter S to E. On average, it takes nearly 35 turns for any single battle at the Barracks Skater to go from letter S to E, with the longest letter S to letter E stretch, besides the questionable Legion vs. Lad battle in Season 10 Round 1, coming from the Season 6 Championship between Paul Rodriguez and PJ Ladd. P-Rod got letter S on turn 8 of that match, then lasted 112 turns before getting letter E on the 120th turn. On the other end of the scale, Joslin's not only one of seven skaters to suffer from getting five straight letters in a row, he's the only former champ among the unlucky group to get S, K, A, T, and E without landing any tricks in between. Kelly Hart was the first victim of the five turns, five letters streak, back in season 3, round 2 against Corey Kennedy. Hart put on a respectable performance in the first 29 turns of the battle, but a sneaky decision to go for a backside pressure varial flip backfired, greenlighting Corey to quickly whittle Kelly down with a pressure flip, switch tray, switch backside flip, nollie front three kick flip, and ultimately switch big flip. Davis Torgerson was the second battle at the Barracks competitor back in the fifth season to fall in five straight turns after receiving letter S, thanks to Paul Rodriguez's Nolly hard flip, miraculous big heel flip, laser flip, inward heel flip, and the ruthless Nolly late flip. The third occurrence of five straight letters would be in the battle at the Barracks 7 round 1 match between Trent McClung and that season's eventual winner, Cody Cepeda. McClung got Cepeda to letter T on the 61st turn, but Cody held on until Trent missed a switch varial heel on offense. Cody gave Trent letter S on turn 73 with a Nolly double flip, at which time every turn after that would be a letter for McClung, including a switch double flip, Nolly double heel, switch laser, and Nolly frontside double kickflip. Jamie Foy lasted until turn 16 before Diego Najera's Nolly heel flip, switch tray flip, Nolly backside flip, switch frontside flip, and Nolly hard marked the fourth ever 5 up 5 down letter sequence back in season 11 round 1. Joslyn's 5 back to back letters is the 12th season's third instance of such a tragic fate to take place, which first occurred when Carlos Ibero received the Cody Cepeda treatment after leading the match for 36 turns. Mike Vallely got 5 letters in a row thanks to Tyler Peterson's retaliation in round 1. Apart from Aurelian hard flip late flip match ender, Joslyn's lackluster performance made this a forgettable battle. Thanks to the hardworking folks at the Barracks HQ, we, the ungrateful YouTube freeloaders, you little snot nosed brats, were gifted with not just one battle, but a second round two match between Kiyonosuke Yamashita and Sean Hover. By far the better match of the weekend, it didn't take long to find out Kiyonosuke, who quietly took care of business against Donnie Hickson in round one, is by no means a regular Joe, and his skating has been described as having an old soul, straight from the mouth of Prince primitive founder Paul Rodriguez. Winning the Rochambeau first try with the tried and true rock, Kiyonosuke's opening frontside shove would lead to a couple more shoves in different stances before getting busy with a nearly clean sweep of the straight eight, only having to redo an admittedly inexcusable nollie kickflip on offense. And Sean Hover was along for the ride, fulfilling his defensive duties on the octuplet of kickflips and heel flips in all four stances. A fully completed execution of regular, switch, nollie, and fakey heel flips and kick flips on both offense and defense is a rare phenomenon in battle at the barracks, occurring in less than 5% of the now 392 total matches. The first time both offense and defense handled a straight eight was in season four round two, when Davis Torgerson faced off Shane O'Neill. And apart from Jim Greco calling for Torgi to redo a switch flip, a comprehensive run of the required tricks were in the books. After the straight eight, Kiyonosuke got right to work on the straight 16, 
instantly stunning Sean with S on the backside flip, and then again on the half cab heel for letter K. Kianosuke got nearly halfway through the 16 backside and frontside flips and heels in all four stances before the fakie frontside heel flip miss, which might have been the fault of Mario McCoy, who called for a stop to the match in order to take a moment to appreciate the gangster steez exhibited in the previous turn's frontside heel flip. Sean did his thing with some big spins and a cab before a nollie back three big got away from him, allowing Kianosuke to hit refresh with a tray flip on offense. The ghost of Sean Davis grabbed Sean Hover and yanked him off of the fakey tray, which is the only explanation for the letter A. Kianosuke's big flip right after found him face down on the concrete prompting the gargantuan Sean Hover to pick back up the straight 16 effort with a nollie back heel on offense. Sean quickly pivoted to a visibly wonky switch front three shove, and I couldn't help but exhale air forcibly out of my nose when Barra suggested they use the honor system. The self-proclaimed toughest ref in the biz Harshest ref for the biz. This is gonna let Hover off on some questionable heel touch with a 50% successful trick. When there are two cameras available to review whether or not Sean violated with a touch, it didn't matter because Sean missed on the redo. And Kianosuke laid down the 10th variation among the straight 16 with a nollie front heel before both him and Sean transitioned to a couple hard flips. While Kelly Hart furiously texted Don Brown with a strategy to get Kianosuke off Flakai and on S, the primitive Am went on to knock down two more switch heel variations, ultimately completing 75% of the straight 16 before accidentally stumbling upon Sean's weakness via the varial heel. As far as straight 16s go, Kianosuke ranks amongst the 96th percentile of skaters who've run the gauntlet in a single battle, with Chris Joslin remaining the only competitor so far to land 100% of the 16 corresponding maneuvers in one go which was back in Season 11, Round 3 against Felipe Gustavo, who landed 15 of 16, missing only the switch frontside heel flip. In Season 11, Round 1, Jocelyn would get close to a second full run of the straight 16, but never got around to attempting a frontside heel before beating Carlos Hibero on a yawn-worthy fakie big flip. A similar case happened in PJ Ladd's 145-turn marathon match against Chris Roberts' Legion of Doom, who landed all of the 16 aforementioned maneuvers except the nollie backside kickflip before beating the Legion with a cab big spin. In terms of the death blow, the varial heel flip is 81.32% consistent out of the 348 attempts made in Battle at the Barracks. And out of the 127 unique death blows to end a match, a varial heel flip is the fifth easiest trick that has resulted in letter E, occurring only one time prior in round one of season 12 when Marcos Montoya beat Dion Harris. The easiest death blow ever is the big spin, which is almost 90% consistent in Battle at the Barracks, but ended two matches, first in Season 1 when Eric Ellington beat Danny Montoya, and once more in Season 3, Round 2, when Johnny Layton said f*** it and gave Chris Cole the easy dub. Kianosuke securing a spot in Round 3 means he faces either Nick Holt or Felipe Mota.